just an amazing season lying ahead of us. We're talking about it, everything. And Rian last weekend spoke about positioning. The week before, we spoke as well about who we are and what we can do, what is our ability. And the thing is that we need to be reminded so often of what God has released upon you. Especially in this time and season where we under so much challenges and attacks from darkness and things. And this is, um, especially now in this month, this is actually the high month of the occult. But my question is, what are you going to do in this month? I guarantee you most people are going to go in a warfare mode. Most people are going to become one of the three musketeers and start sword fighting the devil. It's not necessary. It's by becoming. It's by becoming what God released upon you. What do I do? I, I'm seated in Christ, in heavenly places, on the throne. What happened? I became glory. Where glory is, there can't be darkness. There's no darkness in heaven. So what am I going to do? I'm going to focus, I'm going to leave my eyes and fix my eyes on Jesus so that I become light, a life-giving spirit. Darkness trembles, darkness flees, and those who are lost... Get the sound, the frequency, the vibration out of my position and out of my heart and they get a desire of what they were before they were in the mother's womb. Did I waste my time with the devil? That's exactly what a devil wants. He wants you in warfare. He wants you to engage him all the time so you forget about becoming the, like the great I am. Do you know what? None of us can give the devil any credit for our circumstances and our positions. Who makes the decisions in your life? We're in darkness in difficult times because of our decisions that we make. Not because of the devil. Because of what we engage and how we look, that we look in the natural and not in the spirit, as the Lord says. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 3 says, fix your eyes on things above, heavenly things. What I want to talk to you today is 2 Corinthians 5. Let's start with 17 to 20. I'm going to read out of the Amplified. There, if any person is grafted in Christ the Messiah, he's a new creation, he's a new creature altogether. So, when you got saved, you got reborn, you went through salvation, you're a new creation. Things of the past is gone, you've been set apart. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us unto harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. So when I become what he says, you bring other people around you, you give them a desire to come in harmony. Because all about the kingdom is about unity to glorify God, to reveal God. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. And here's our key verse. 
So we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us, we as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. I love it. There's another title that the Lord bestowed upon you. And with every title, there's a characteristic, there's power, there's dominion, there's rulership, there's authority, there's a mandate being released. You are Christ's ambassador. The word says it's a representative. Ambassador in the Hebrew means seer. One who goes on an errand, a high rank person who represent a government and transact business from the seat of government. You are high ranked person being released from a high government of authority to do business with. From the seat of government. It also says it is a messenger. The Greek's name is Pribio. To act as, and listen to this, to act as an established statesman, trusted and respected. You're a statesman. You had a great attitude. You're a statesman. (laughs) And the best is, you've been appointed by the great I am. The other thing about ambassador, it is a person that reveals its origin or country of existence. Where's your country, your origin, your place of existence? (coughs) Heaven. And no wonder he says in the scripture there that you are positioned in the favor of God. When God or when the country sends an ambassador, it means that that person has got all the knowledge or understanding and the revelation of the DNA, of the blueprint, of the scroll of that country or place who it represents. Now when God created you, He gave you everything. So what do you have? You've got the blueprint from heaven in your DNA. The reality of the matter is when God created, you were part of him in him. How is that possible, Etienne? I knew you before creation. I knew you before you were in the mother's womb. Go and read your Bible. So what happens now? You've been a witness of creation. Why? Because God knew he's he's my ambassador. She's my ambassador. She needs to see. He needs to see everything so that he could become it. You need to bring heaven to earth. You need to to bring that reflection. It needs to be a mirror image inside of us that reflects heaven to the people. See what God goes even further. Go to Hebrews 6. The 13, for when God made his promise to Abram, he swore by himself, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, saying, blessing I certainly will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. So what does an ambassador do? 
He comes to bless a place because He releases heaven. He releases the presence and the fragrance and the sound of God upon earth. And that causes multiplication of heaven on earth. What happens now? You bear fruit. And what did God say? I stand in that promise. And so it was that Abram, having waited long and endured, patiently realized and retained in the birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come and was going to be promised. Accordingly, God also in his desire to show more convincingly beyond doubt to those who were up to inherit the promise to unchangeableness of his purpose and his plan intervene with an oath. What did God do? He said, yeah, I know you can't trust man. And how often do we swear to each other and make promises, even to God? Especially when we're in difficult times. Lord, if you give me this, I'm gonna do that. Till you get. What did God come and do now? He stood in the gap. He made a promise. This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, and which, in which it is impossible for God to ever to prove false or deceive us, we who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed to us and set before us. God can never lie. What is the hope which God set before you. Because here he says, for those who run to him, that promise is yea and amen. How many prophetic words have you received in your life? And how many have been fulfilled? Because what happens? The blessing of the Lord comes when you walk in obedience, when you walk in faith. And your heart is positioned to glorify Him. That prophetic words become yea and amen. There it says that Abram persevered. He was persistent. He was patient. Because he knew God's word is yea and amen. And a lot of times we get prophetic words and we think it is impossible. It, it's never going to happen. It is impossible. The more impossible it looks, the more it's from God. I can tell you now, if you get prophetic words that look so easy and sound so easy, was it a way? If it's impossible, start praising and thanking God. You need to reposition yourself. You need to position yourself for that word to manifest. It means my heart comes in unity with God. I'll never forget it. I was saved for probably two weeks. And in that one week, I had four or five prophetic voices from different people that did not know me. And they told me, Etienne, Lord shows me you're going to go into the world. You're going to preach. You're going to be on radio. You're going to be on television. You're going to see over 100 countries you're going to minister in. And, and you're going to raise people from the dead and signs, wonders, and miracles. And, and. Now I'm saved for two weeks. I thought these people are crazy. Totally crazy. And what happened? I just said, Lord, I surrender into that word as long as I can glorify you. I come in agreement with it. Within six months, all of that has happened. Of 
six months out of it. It was two months saved. I did my first prophetic conference that I was invited. Until today, I've traveled 58 countries, ministered, done all the rest, raised people from the dead, signs, wonders, miracles, all the other things. Is it because I'm good? No. It's because God is God. God made you a covenant. He made you an oath. He made you a promise. That promise is imprinted in your DNA. Let's get a little bit supernatural. That covenant is imprinted in each and every cell of your body. Because God wants that every part, every body, bit of your body, soul, and spirit to be in total alignment with Him. So there's not an excuse for any cell, any bone, not to come in agreement with everything that God created you, body, soul, and spirit. God hides nothing to you. People, I want to go crazy. I want to burst. This is the greatest time of your life. This is the time of God, of revealing Him, of doing wonders to create things and not only in the Spirit, in the natural. We'll talk about that one day to participate with heaven, to create with Him. I remember it years ago when I came off the ventilator and out of a coma, the Lord said to me, Etienne, you'll be rewarded in heaven according to your participation with heaven. You're an ambassador. What does it behold? Ambassador's got a title, it's got a representation, so it means that you have been appointed to conform everything around you as to your place of origin. So what does it mean? God calls you into a place of relationship and not face to face. Not in your imagination, face to face. But is your expectation right here, right now, to see him face to face? Because that unlocks all the gateways, all the pathways of heaven is that expectation of love. Lord, I need to see your face because you appointed me as ambassador. I need to show the people what my king looks like and what heaven is about. John 17, John 17 is basically your basic foundation to have a a spiritual, a supernatural lifestyle with God. And I love it in, in verse, what is it, 10 to 12. He says, all things are mine of mine are yours and all things that are yours belong to me and I am glorified in them through them. They have done me honour in them, my glorious chief. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are still in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father, keep in your name those whom you have given to me that name may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I kept and preserved them in your name. Those you have given me are guarded and protected and none of them has perished or is lost except the son of perdition, perdition, Judas. So that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That's part of your duty as an ambassador. Says, those you have given me 
I guard it, I protect it. And not one of them was as perish or is, is, is are lost except the son of perdition. Part of your ambassadorship is protect, to reveal, to show, to cover, and to bring people into the maturity of Jesus Christ. To bring people into their sonship, to bring people into their ambassadorship. Verse 16 and 17 says, they are not us. They are not of the world. Worldly belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, purify, concentrate, separate them from yourself. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Where do you come from? What did God just say? And where do you reign and rule from? How do you visualize and see yourself? Because what you behold of your eyes, you become. So what happens in the morning when you wake up? I see myself in Christ on the throne gazing through the eyes of Jesus upon all of creation. Sanctify them with truth. If we read further on, I think it's around about verse 21. Jesus talks and he says, Father... I first sanctify myself with truth so that I could sanctify other. So how do I live out my ambassadorship? How do I make it manifest? How do I ground it here on earth? I need to be sanctified with truth. What is the truth? The truth of Jesus Christ. What does heaven look like? Because I've got authority, dominion to release it on earth. But if we're not, if we don't have that personal relationship, that intimacy, it's never gonna happen. Hebrews 7 talks about the order of Melchizedek. That's part of your ambassadorship. You are king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek. So ambassadorship gives you the power and the authority to release and to live those two dimensions, characteristics here on earth. Priesthood is bringing people into salvation. Bringing people into unity with Christ. Kings rule, reign, so that everything becomes glorified. So that you make, you create a mirror image of heaven here on earth. Why? Where God sees a reflection of himself, he manifests. Love it, Ephesians 2. I love it to read it out of the Passion Translation. It states it so beautifully. verse 7 says throughout the coming of ages we will be that's all of us 
the visible display of the infinite, limitless riches of His grace and kindness which was showered upon us in Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, We have become His poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny He has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus the Anointed One. Even before we were born, God planned in an, an advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. God planned in advance that you will be his ambassador here. Infinite, limitless display of heaven. Infinite, limitless display of whom he is. Do you think you can do it? If God says it, it's possible. Have you desired it? Have you dreamt about it? Have you, have you meditated on what does it look? To visualize it. I love it in Hebrew 1. It talks about the sun. And when God speaks about the sun, about Jesus, he's actually speaking about you as well because you're also a son. Are we in agreement with that? So everything that's released upon Jesus released upon you. Otherwise, I must throw my Bible away. Hebrew 1 verse 3 says, He is the sole expression of the glory of God. What do you do now? I am the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being the outraying or radiance of the divine, He is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by His mighty word of power. What happens here? You've got everything, His character, His nature. You rule and reign by your mighty word of power. Nowhere have I read, become a sword fighter. Mighty word of power, if I speak, it is done. It is done. All I have to do is say, Lord, what do you want to release? What is your plan, your purpose here on earth? It is done. What keeps us away from these dimensions of becoming that? Obviously, it's intimacy. Firstly, it starts with love. It's to ask you, are you in love with God? Are you in love? It means when you're sitting here, it did I borrow keys in you. Do you get the goosebumps if you're just thinking about Jesus or just realizing you're with him right now? I think Megan will be a good example. She just got engaged and getting married. <laughs> Have you got that same feeling right now in you? Or do you love God because of what you could get? Or you're in love as well. There's a difference, huge difference. The biggest thing I think that keeps us away, religion. If we start talking about all the spiritual things, you get thrown out of places. 
If you start speaking about your encounters and revelation, how you saw Jesus face to face, how he walked into your room in the natural and spoke to you, how you got transported, how you got translated, how you got glorified, become transfigured, they judge you. What they're actually doing is they're revealing their lack of intimacy and knowledge and relationship of God. And that's where go. most of us grew up in traditional churches. We've even spoke about an angel coming into our house. Oh, here he is, will be brandstapel. What's in the Bible is yours. What happened there is just the beginning. Do you realize that's your flaw? That's your beginning. So we must get away from all our systems and doctrines and belief systems of the past. Everything you think of, everything you speak, the sound, the frequency that you are releasing creates structures in the spirit. It builds, you form, it's like if I can put it in, yeah, it's like you're building a city around you in the spirit. That city will all, all reflect heaven or it will reflect the earth, which is more darkness. So we need to come into a place of relationship with God. We allow Him to be God to shift you, to shake you, to take you out of your comfort zones. Do you realize an ambassador could never be arrested on his premises? Doesn't matter what he does. He can murder. He can murder somebody. He's not ever going to be. If he leaves that premises, he can get arrested. Put that in your life. If I leave my position of origin in Christ on the throne, I'll be arrested by darkness. Who do we blame? Not the devil, blame yourself. You stepped out. We get arrested when we fix our eyes on what the world says. And I can talk about it. I went through it. I always taught the thing that says if you if anything that man says, says about you hurts you or affects you, even if it's lies, you better get closer to God. I preached it all over the world. And then I got caught in it. Went through a difficult time because I engaged what the people said. They gossip, slandered, and well, here they, they even prayer groups started because I'm a satanic high priest. That's what people spread. And I got so offended. I got so furious. I was been told I sat and while I was sitting and talking, the demons came out of me and they had to flee the table. Oh, you should have heard the thing. And the, the best of all, your friends start spreading the stories with them. That was the worst to me. I engaged it and I nearly lost my ministry. Because I didn't want to do anything with the church anymore. I wanted to run. I left my place of origin. And when I stepped back, it was the start of the greatest season of my life. You can never get arrested if you stay in oneness with them. I want you to go and to meditate. What is it to be ambassador? 
God declared it upon you. He created you to be that. Are you going to receive that appointment, that ordination this morning? We ordained Lorraine. So we just actually did and said, just reminded the earth that was declared on heaven upon her. That's all. Where you walk, you remind the earth of who you are. What? Do I have to go and tell the trees and the chairs and everything, hey, I'm an ambassador? Just want to tell you, no. I walk in my position because I release the sound, the fragrance, the glory, the presence, this mirror image of God. I remind them who I am by just walking. That's all. As easy as that. You see why we miss out, all of us, so much? Because it's what's going on here. As a man thinks with his heart, thinks with his heart, so he is. If your heart is madly in love with Jesus, it's one of them. Your thoughts are exactly the same thoughts as is in heaven. What happens now? You get a desire to reunite everybody to him. Instead of gossiping, slandering, cursing people, getting angry with people, you see, yeah, I feel so sorry what they miss. What can I do to help them? Because it's all for God. And about God. I guess my key to stop, at least. (laughs) (laughs) I saw Marlies sitting there. I'm just joking. (laughs) I'm just joking. (laughs) People, I want you to get excited. I can't. Only you, only you can do it with God. Nobody else can do it for you. I want you to go and sit and to meditate. What God has given me, who am I? You an amazing, powerful being. Nothing is impossible to you. Nothing. Skalk and I sat the other day in Rian. We spoke about miracles, Pakistan, all those places that had happened. Now Skalk also resurrected a person, there is a, a child in there. That is amazing. I remember in Nairobi as well, I went to a conference. And a pastor phoned from Uganda, said, I can't come to the conference. I'm in hospital. My four-year-old son just died now. And we said, sorry, not having it. And when he put the phone down, the Lord said, so what are you going to do about it? And we phoned him back. I went to the head of the conference and said, please, can we phone this pastor? We phoned him in the hospital and the Lord said, you release life. I said, take the mobile phone, put it on the ear, on the, next to the ear of that dead child. He said, but he's dead. I said, it doesn't matter, put it there. And I started praying. Suddenly you heard a shout and the phone was dead. And about 20 minutes later, the pastor phoned back his head, when you prayed, my son arose from the dead. That's you. That's what an ambassador does. It gives life. Show the Lord how much you want it.
Let's praise Him.